This is Earth Files, the award-winning news site with the latest updates in science, environment, and real X-Files. Podcasting in-depth reports beyond the 6 o'clock news by Emmy Award-winning journalist Linda Moulton Howe. In May 2007, several images of an odd dragonfly-shaped machine in the sky were emailed from a Central California resident who called himself Chad. The images were dated May 6, 2007. In addition to the dragonfly-shaped body that had appendages sticking out from a large ring, there was another odd feature. Rising from the ring straight up into the air were slightly curved, thin wires that formed a tall, circular crown above the dragonfly body. Chad was worried about his family's safety and health after he saw the bizarre object at least eight times from his house and on hikes near his home in the Bakersfield region. Neighbors, he said, had also seen the unidentified object. Other photographs of dragonfly-shaped aerial objects began to emerge between May and June 2007 from Lake Tahoe, Capitola, and Big Basin, California, all with appendages sticking out from a ring and the tall, thin wires extending high above. By June 17th, I received a dozen paper photographs dated June 5th 2007, in post office mail. The new drone looked more menacing and more complicated than the others. I had taken to calling the objects drones because eyewitnesses had the impression that the hovering craft were not manned. The dozen photographs were from a man who called himself Tai B. Tai explained he photographed the large dragonfly craft while bicycling with a group in the Big Basin Redwood State Park northwest of Santa Cruz, California. He said they all saw the dragonfly-shaped craft fade in and fade out three times above them. It was on the third fade-in that Ty was able to take 12 photos, which he mailed to me. After the Big Basin craft, no other images of the mysterious dragonfly-shaped drones emerged. After the Big Basin craft... No other images of the mysterious dragonfly-shaped drones emerged, but in January 2008, I received the following email from an Earth Files viewer in Van Buren, Arkansas, a suburb of Fort Smith. Quote, Dear Linda, it was suggested that I send you a letter to let you know that I was pretty certain I saw a drone in Fort Smith, Arkansas. What was strange is at first I believed it to be a helicopter— and then I realized it wasn't making the noise of a helicopter. So I looked again, and I saw that wire cone-shaped part and realized what I was seeing, the drones in the photos at earthfiles.com. I was so shocked I didn't think about getting someone to take a picture of it. My cell phone isn't a newer one, so my camera on my phone sucks. Anyway, I saw it for what it's worth. I also asked my sister if I could tell you about her sighting in Oklahoma several years ago. When I told her what I saw, she told me she had seen something like what I was describing. Sincerely, Melody MacIver Thaxton, unquote. I phoned Melody and her sister, who I will call Jane Smith, to honor her request for anonymity. Jane explained that she had two sightings the same week in June 2003, long before all the May to June 2007 excitement about the drone photographs and eyewitness reports. At the time, Jane lived in the very small rural town of Hartshorn, Oklahoma, about two hours southwest of Van Buren in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Jane agreed to talk about what she said is the most extraordinary sky object she has ever seen. I went outside of my porch, and I saw what I thought was an airplane. And it got closer and closer, and it had all kinds of arms and legs on it and spirally things and lights all over it, and it had writing on it. The writing, it looked like a foreign language. And then it just kind of hovered. It didn't, like, fly. It just hovered. And then I finally went inside, and then I saw it again maybe a couple of days later, but it was in the evening. And it was doing the same thing, and it was around the same area. And it just kind of hovers. 
What color are you seeing, and how close do you think it is above where you're sitting on your house porch? Sort of a grayish color, or like a pewter, like a metal. Mm -hmm. Um, As far as distance, like a helicopter before it lands on the ground. Do you think that would be like 50 feet above you? Um, Maybe a little bit more than that. Do you have any trees? Yeah, there were some trees, but it approached and got past the trees where I could see it better. And when it passed the trees, were the trees 50 feet high or shorter or taller? Oh, the trees were much shorter, but it approached and got past the trees, but it was, you know, it was still above the trees. I see. Okay. Now, how close do you think that it got to you on the porch? It didn't get much closer than that. About 50 feet, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Now, the color is a pewter gray. Mm -hmm. Could you see writing because it was a different color? The writing was like a darker color than the pewter, like a black. It was a dark. Black on the gray. Yeah. What was the shape of this aerial object? Oh, that's hard to describe. Um, It was sort of like flat and round both. Did it look anything like a dragonfly, a long tail with a round front or anything like that? Sort of. It had so many protruding, like, legs and arm type type of things on it. Right. The body of it, it's like it didn't have much body to it, but it had a lot of these extensions out from it. Um, Sort of like a dragonfly, except it had a lot of, a whole bunch of these arms or legs or whatever. Okay. And the writing was where? The bigger part, the bodice part of the thing. The body, a longer piece that the projections came from? Right. This black writing, do you remember any of the shapes? Uh, They were squiggly, like almost like either Eastern type language, you know, like, uh, like an Egyptian writing. Or Jewish writing, you know, it was a foreign type. It was all squiggly. You use the word spiral things coming off of the main longer body. When you say spiral things, what do those spiral things look like? Uh, I don't know how to describe them. Sort of like other little little arms, you know, when they come out, you know, like a spider, sort of. Like something that um, that has the ability to turn in any direction. As this approached you, it stopped still in the air? Yeah, it just sort of hovered. And when it hovered, did it turn or rotate in any direction? No, but it, the lights on it were changed at different times. Now, the, um, the little arms and stuff like that, now they moved around, but the main part of the craft itself didn't really turn or anything. It just kind of stayed hovering there. Okay. So the slightly longer body part uh, is staying stationary, but you could see with your own eyes that those spider-like arms coming off of the body, did they rotate? What did they do? They just kind of moved around in different directions. So in the twilight, sitting on the porch, when it's at its closest and it stops, you're seeing the lights What color are they? Where are they on this body, and what do the lights do? They're just light. I didn't see any color to the lights. I saw was like light. White? Yeah, like white lights. And where were they? Uh, They were on the body part, the bigger body part, and they were also on the arms, and there were several on those spirally type things. Now, were the spiral-type things, did that look like wires curving up into the air above the flat body? I could just tell that they were there. Were you seeing it at 50 feet approximately above you, only the bottom of it, or could you see a profile of it? It was more of a profile, like part of the front and part of the side. Were all of the lights along that body and where the legs were, did they form any kind of a pattern? So 
some of them seemed to like take turns lighting up, like they would gradually all light uh, one at a time and be all lit, and then the, and then they would go off, and then they would do it again. So there was kind of a constant lights coming on, and then did they all go off at the same time? And then no, they were all in different places, going doing this weird <laughs> light on, light off kind of thing. Okay. Was there any time when it did not have any lights showing? Uh, I don't think so. So there was this active white light activity all over the body of this object the whole time. Right. How big do you think those lights were? Some of them were smaller. Some of them were about the same size as the tips of my fingers, and some of them were larger. Where were the larger ones? In the bigger... Like the smaller ones were on the smaller of the spirally things and the larger ones were on the leg things and part of the bodice. Did you see all of those legs move at one time or another? I saw the um, the smaller ones moving some, but not the larger ones. The larger ones just were just still. How long did you sit on the porch and watch this object hovering above you? Oh, my. Uh, the first time I saw it, Probably, I don't know, um, maybe 45 minutes, an hour, long time. And during that time, did you ever hear any sound from it? Like a humming or a buzzing sound. Could you try to mimic that for me now? <laughs> Steady, or did it go off and on? or Kind of off and on. Did you ever think about calling the police or a fire department or somebody to come take a look? Uh, I contemplated actually sharing it with a neighbor or a friend or something, and but I actually, to be honest, I was afraid that they would think I was crazy and and, <laughs> and not really listen to me because I did discuss it with my husband later. I talked to him about it and told him what I saw. He just kind of shook his head and and said, "I probably just saw a satellite," and yeah. I told him, "No, it wasn't a satellite." You know, living out where I was at. Uh, we're talking about hillbilly authority. They would just think that you were drinking or something. Hmm. <laughs> Anyone that would take it seriously or want to check it out was way too far away to get there. Because any place like that or any authority, it would be like two or three hours away. Wow. Because it was a little, you know, way rural, way out in the country. So, Are there any military bases? Yes. Uh, McAllister, Oklahoma has a, they make ammunition and they test it. It's called the Army Ammunition something. I can't remember. And it's over McAllister. And McAllister's how far from Hartshorn? It is like mm, 30 minutes, maybe. So very close. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And at the end of this hour watching the object in the sky, what happened? Did it leave or what? It just like it went backwards, kind of gradually faded. I just couldn't see it anymore. When it began to move away from you, did you notice any change in the color of the lights, the intensity of the lights, the number of lights? Did anything on it change when it started to move backwards? It seemed to brighten up more. Did it go back away from you very slowly? No, it actually seemed to move kind of fast. It was surprising. I actually wondered if it wasn't something from the government, like a secret project of some kind. The object moves away from you. Mm -hmm. Describe what happens as it's moving away. Um, it just kind of gradually fades. It just kind of disappears. It was as though it was never there. How many days or nights later was it when you see it a second time? It was close. The timing was close. I remember that. It was within the same week. It was evening time, and I thought I saw just a bright star at first from a distance, and then it got closer, and I pulled into my driveway. Where I lived at, it was on top of a hill, so I had a really good, clear view of the sky. And as it approached, I realized it was the same thing again, but it wasn't as close as it was before. And you knew it was the same because why? I don't know. I just knew it was the same thing. It was just, I guess, because, well, I could see that there were more lights on it, and it just seemed to hover like before. And I just felt like it was the same thing. 
Did it come close enough for you to hear that hum? No. Did it stop in the air? Uh, It was doing the hover thing again. And this time, how close did it get to you after you got out of the car? Uh, It was further, a lot further. If it were 50 feet before, what would you guess the second time it was? Oh, it was probably, probably about 200 maybe, 100, somewhere like that. It was quite a bit further. Okay. But you do see it stop. Yeah. And then what happened? It just stayed there for a while. And did you just stand out in the yard or did you? Yeah, I watched it for a while. I kind of knew what to expect, but I knew that it was time for my husband's call. He works away and he calls at a certain time. And so I went in. The lighted object was still there hovering in the sky. Yeah. And you get through with the phone call. Do you go back out? No, because we talked for a long period of time on the phone back then. So you do not know what happened to it, but as far as you're concerned, two of these odd dragonfly-shaped objects, one in the twilight and one at night, came within one week to where you lived in Hartshorn, Oklahoma, probably June of 2003. Right. I sent Jane Smith seven drone images and asked her to pick out the one type that matched most closely what she had seen from her Hart's Horn, Oklahoma porch. She picked the seventh one, the Big Basin Craft. She also surprised me by adding that in addition to many of the appendages moving, she watched the cage hanging beneath the aerial drone open and close several times, but she did not see anything leave or enter the moving cage. I also emailed the same seven photographs to Melody, and ask her to pick the one that most closely matched what she saw in Van Buren, Arkansas, in November 2007. She picked photograph number three, one of the Chad photographs, from Central California, dated May 6, 2007. I was leaving the building where I work, and I went to my car, and I looked in the direction where I was fixing to drive out of the parking lot. And there's a building, there's a business that's next to where we're at. Above that, I see this thing in the corner of my eye. And at first, I thought it was a helicopter. And I thought, wait a minute, that's not a helicopter. I realized that there was no sound. You know how much sound helicopters make, especially if you're in a vicinity. This was not making a sound. And I realized I was looking at what appeared to be like those pictures I had seen of the drones, which had this weird, funny, metal-looking-shaped thing on it. And it looks like it's got a tail, like a long, flat tail sticking out. Well, we've talked in 2007 about a dragonfly shape. Would this be like a dragonfly? Yeah, kind of like that. A long tail that has... That's the best way. I mean, if you want to compare it to something... Yeah, I guess so. There's not anything that I've ever seen anything like that. It was so unique. Yeah, exactly. Were you seeing this aerial object because it had lights on it? No, it wasn't dark. There was no lights on it at all. I mean, it was still daylight, and it was hazy outside. Like, it might rain, but it's not going to rain for a little while. Okay, hazy gray. Yeah, hazy gray. And it was in pretty clear sight, and there was another person, and I think they were a customer of where I work. They looked up and kind of looked at me and said, are you going to get a picture of that? And I said, all I've got is my camera phone. And I started to go back to the building to see if I could find a photographer that was still there. And as I was going back to the building, the thing just kind of dissipated. You could tell it was moving slightly, but it wasn't moving very fast. So it just sort of faded out? Yeah, it just faded out. You know the profile in the photographs at Earth Files, all of them have prongs or some kind of wiry structure going straight up into the sky? Yeah, that's what I was telling you, that stuff that stuck out. So you were seeing those prongs sticking up in the sky above the body? Yeah, that's why at first I thought it was a helicopter when I looked at it, and then I had to do a double take because there was no sound. And then 
I realized it wasn't the right shape for a helicopter. It definitely had those prongs on it going up. Now, your sister said she could see what she called the spider legs sticking out from the longer body. Some of them were moving. Did you see any of the projections off of the main body moving? No. um, Evidently, from the way she described what she saw, she saw it at a closer distance. Mine was further away, and I couldn't see anything moving, and it was pretty hazy, but the thing itself was just kind of like floating, and it had these metal things going up, almost like a funnel shape the way it would go up, like it was like an upside-down funnel. Right. And then it had like a tail sticking out that was metal-like, and it was basically slowly moving towards the west, When I realized what it was and that it was not a helicopter because there was no sound, it didn't move away fast. It just disappeared, kind of dissipated, you know, like a cloud of smoke. That was November of 2007. Had you talked with your sister about what she had seen five years earlier before? No. I had went to a Christmas get-together And we were just sitting around talking about things, and she had never brought this up. And I had told her, I said, you want to hear something odd that happened to me recently? And I told her about what I saw, and she said, that sounds exactly what I saw a few years back. And I said, what did you think it was? She said, I thought it was like some kind of spy equipment. Part of the thing is that most people around here... If you tell them that you saw something like that, they think you're crazy. I haven't really discussed it with a whole lot of people because, well, because of that reason. So this is the Bible Belt. Not saying that Christians can't believe in UFOs, but a lot of them, they discourage it. Thanks for listening to this Earth Files podcast from the edges of science, environment, and real X-Files. Go to www.earthfiles.com to see more than a thousand Earth Files reports with photographs, drawings, and documents. And visit Earth Files every day, every week, for new reports and new podcasts. That's www.earthfiles.com. 